Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a $450 Lenovo laptop powered by the all-new Ryzen 5 5500U. Now, I've been trying to get my hands on a 5500U powered laptop for a little while, but they've been a bit expensive, up to $700 to $800, and I was looking for the cheapest one, and I think I finally found it, at least as of making this video. This was recently on sale over at Walmart.com for $449, but since it's been shipped and I got it in the mail, it's actually jumped up to $479, but it might go back on sale, so definitely keep an eye on it. Taking a look at the keyboard here, as you can see, we do have a number pad. This also has a fingerprint reader built in. It's not a top-of-the-line laptop, given the price, we're at $450 to $470 for this. But overall, I think it's a decent budget setup, and I'm really excited to test out this new Ryzen 5 5500 UAPU. And by the way, this is actually something I'm just noticing right now as making this video. It is a backlit keyboard. When it comes to I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we have one USB 3.1 port and a full-size SD card slot. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have our power input. Full-size HDMI, another USB 3.1 port, USB Type-C, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. As for the specs, for that CPU we have the all-new AMD Ryzen 5 5500U, 6 cores, 12 threads with a base clock of 2.1GHz and a boost up to 4.0. Built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1800MHz, 8GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz, there's 4 gigs soldered to the board, and there's also a 4 gig stick, so if you wanted to upgrade the RAM in this, it is totally possible, but you can only go up to a maximum of 20 gigabytes. A user upgradable 256 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, and a 15.6 inch 1080p LCD display. And real quick, I just pulled the bottom off so you can take a look here. As you can see, we do have this user replaceable M.2, and right under here, we have a single stick of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. This is a 4 gig stick. The maximum you can put in here is 16, but remember we have 4 gigabytes soldered to the board, so maximum on this PC here would be 20 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a quick look at the BIOS. Now there's not much that we can mess around with in here, but there are two very important settings. First one, system performance. Near the very bottom here, it's set to intelligent cooling, and this is going to keep that CPU around 13 to 15 watts. We also have Extreme Performance and Battery Saver. I'm going with Extreme Performance. This will actually take the TDP up on that CPU to 30 watts. Next one, our VRAM allocation for the built-in Radeon GPU. We can go up to 2 gigs, and these are the only things I change in this BIOS. Okay, so here we are. This is running Windows 10 Home right out of the box, and one of the main reasons I went into the BIOS and turned it to performance mode was CPU wattage. When it's in intelligent cooling, it goes to about 14 watts, and that's going to limit the performance that this little laptop can put out, but on performance mode, this will actually go up to around 30 watts. Dips around 31, 32, and uh, I'll show you that right now. So right here I have hardware info running. My wattage at idle is 2.7 watts. Let's just run Prime95 real quick. This will stress out all six cores and 12 threads. And you'll see it jump up to 30 watts here. 31, 32. But yeah, now we can get the maximum performance out of this thing without using any third-party application. So Lenovo, I think, did a pretty decent job when it comes to that performance mode. The next thing I always like to do with these APUs is make sure that this GPU is going to run at its maximum performance. And in performance mode, it does, and it'll stay there. So from CPU-Z, we'll go to graphics. Our core clock on that Radeon 7 GPU is 400 megahertz right now. But if I put a load on it, it'll jump up to 1800 and it will stay there. So if you do pick one of these laptops up and you want to get the maximum performance out of it, make sure you go into the BIOS. Now this will dramatically decrease the battery life, but in my opinion, it will be worth it when it comes to gaming. And when it comes down to it, the 5500U definitely has enough power to get you through what you're going to do every single day. Even if you wanted to do some light 1080p video editing, this is going to handle it just fine. But a lot of people just do uh, web browsing, so let's go ahead and check that out. We do have Wi-Fi 6 built into this machine here. And as you can see, it loads up everything really quickly. Just went over to Lenovo's website. Another thing I like to test here is WebGL performance. So we'll head over to these tests. Up here we have the FPS, 500 fish, we're at 60, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, and when we go to 20,000 it drops down to around 55, but uh, yeah, that's looking really good for a mobile chip. 
Next thing I did was run some benchmarks on this laptop. First up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core of 1121 and a multi of 4694. Moving over to Cinebench R23, total multi-core score of 7,126. I also tested out some GPU benchmarks using 3 d Mart. Night Raid came in with a 13,061. Firestrike, 3,072. And finally, for the GPU side of things, we have Time Spy with a 1,205. And the very last thing I ran was PC Mark 10 with a total score of 4,988. So yeah, I mean, for a mobile chip, this is actually looking really good. Now it's time to see if this laptop can game. And first up, we have Genshin Impact, 1080p, medium low settings. We're getting 60. I have seen it dip down every once in a while, even with these settings, but it's few and far in between. It's really when there's lots of particles on screen, but overall it handles this game really well. When it comes to Fortnite on these APUs, I prefer using the performance mode, but we're still at 1080p and we do have textures set to high. This is performing really well. Next on the list, one of my favorites, Original Skyrim, 1080p, high settings, and you know this is an older game, but it's still a great game to play. We're at 60, high settings, we're good to go with this one. Next on the list, CSGO, 1080p, medium settings, and I was actually expecting a lot more out of this game. We got an average of 73 FPS, and I was actually expecting in the 90s at least, given that we're at medium settings, 1080p. If you want to go a bit higher, you can drop that down to 900p, and with a laptop like this, your best bet is to drop a lot of these games down to 900p if you want to play at or over 60. Next on the list, Street Fighter V 900p medium settings. Now I was really hoping we could get 1080 out of it because with the new 5600 and the 5700G for desktops, we can, but with this one here, we're still a bit limited and we have to drop that resolution down. Now when it comes to the mobile Ryzen 5 chips, I've never really had good luck with GTA 5. This is at 900p normal settings and we still can't get a constant 60 out of it. I actually came out with an average of 54. And uh, if we take a look at that wattage on the CPU, it jumps up to around 37 every once in a while. And at that wattage, the fan on this little laptop does kick up, but it's really not that loud. And as you can see, we're hitting around 73 degrees Celsius. Here we have Forza Horizon 4, 900p, low settings, and by the end, I got an average of 56. Was really hoping that we could get a constant 60 out of this. There is one more step down, which is lowest, but it takes away basically everything that looks good in this game. Now it's time to move over to a little bit of emulation. I just went with the higher end stuff. Here we have Wii U using SimU, Vulcan back in, async shaders, and we can run this at 30. 60 is pretty much out of the question. I was getting around 43 FPS when I had that unlocked, but uh, at 30, you can run this all day. And if you wanted to go with something like the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii, this laptop's going to handle it just fine, along with N64 and Sega Saturn. And finally, for emulation here, we have PS3 using RPCS3 and that Vulcan back end. Tekken 6, which is actually an easier one to emulate when it comes to this emulator, we're running this just fine. We got those 6 cores and 12 threads pumping out with this one. Now this doesn't mean that every PS3 game is going to run at full speed, because when we move over to a harder one to run, like Skate 3, it really does kind of fall on its face. And with this one, I'm getting some weird stuff going on. I've tried to mess around with the settings. Sometimes it feels like it locks at 30 and then unlocks itself. But uh, in the settings, we're set at 60 FPS, and it's really, really struggling to get there. So in the end, it's definitely not a bad laptop for $450. It's not great at gaming, but you could get by at lower settings. Emulation will be absolutely amazing on this thing. 
and it'll basically handle anything you want to do in your everyday life. Like I mentioned, video editing, photo editing, you want to do some web browsing, some 4K video playback, do your homework here, even use this as a work laptop. It's going to be just fine for you. We do have enough power with that 5500U. Personally, I was hoping to see a little better GPU performance out of this thing, but still we're stuck with integrated graphics. And given that the 5500U is actually based on Zen 2 instead of Zen 3, when it comes down to it, the way I see it, this is basically a rebranded 4600U. But we do have a lot of advantages over the old 4500U. We have those extra six threads. The 4500U only had those six cores. And the built-in GPU is running at 1800 megahertz over the 1500 in the 4500U. So, I mean, if you had to choose between the two, I would definitely go with the new 5500. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the 5500U, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.